descending tracts are the tracts which descend from the cortex or from the brain stem and supply the muscles of the body for voluntary and involuntary control of the movements so what are these descending tracts basically we have the lateral systems of the descending tracts the tracts which descend laterally in the spinal cord and then there are the medial group of uh, descending tracts and uh, these lateral and medial descending tracts differ in terms of whether they are for voluntary control or for involuntary control so lateral descending tracts are for voluntary control of movement and uh, medial descending tracts are for involuntary control of movements now there are other way of classifying descending tracts that is pyramidal and extra pyramidal tract that we will also see so first of all in lateral descending tracts we have the corticospinal tract or also known as the pyramidal tract so other name is corticospinal tract then in lateral spinal tract we also have the rubrospinal tract then in medial descending tracts we have vestibulospinal tract then reticulospinal tract and tectospinal tract tectospinal tract and in vestibulospinal tract again we have medial and lateral vestibulospinal tract and reticulospinal tract again we have pontine and medullary reticulospinal tract now if you notice the names of these, these different uh, descending tracts we can tell from where are they originating so corticospinal tract so it is originating from the cortex and going towards the spinal cord so it is terminating in the spinal cord then rubrospinal tract it is originating in the red nucleus of the midbrain and going into the spinal cord then vestibulospinal tract it is originating in the vestibular nuclei and going to the spinal cord reticulospinal tract the names pontine and medullary so pontine one is originating in the pontine reticular formation and medullary one is originating in the medullary reticular formation and then we have the tectospinal tract basically this arises from the collicular nuclei of the midbrain so this uh, lateral descending tracts are for voluntary control of the movement and medial ones are for the involuntary control of the movements and as i told you before that there is another classification that is pyramidal and extra pyramidal tract simple this corticospinal tract is also known as the pyramidal tract and it is the only tract which arises from the cortex and uh, all these arise from the brain stem so they are the ones which are known as the extra pyramidal tracts now let us go one by one into the details of these and see their course how are they originating what is their course where are they terminating and what is their functions so first let us discuss the pyramidal tract or the corticospinal tract so what is the course of pyramidal tract they arise from the cortex and where in cortex there is motor cortex there is not only motor cortex there is premotor area and supplementary motor area and also they arise from somatosensory cortex remember generally we forget that see ultimately the sensations also guide our movement so it is logical only that some fiber should arise from the somatosensory cortex as well so 30% of the fibers arise from premotor area 30% from motor cortex and 40% of the fibers arise from the somatosensory cortex then from different areas these fibers come together and this coming together of the fibers that is known as corona radiata and then it passes via the posterior limb of the internal capsule so internal capsule has anterior limb genu posterior limb is there so via the posterior limb of the internal capsule all these fibers pass and why it is important to remember see if there is an injury into the uh, posterior limb of the internal capsule then what will happen all of the fibers of the pyramidal tract will be affected on the contrary if there is an injury in the cortex maybe a particular area is affected then only some fibers will be affected isn't it
after passing through the posterior limb of internal capsule all these fibers descend and they descend up to the lower part of the medulla where 80 percent of these fibers cross okay and 20 percent of the fibers keep descending and when they are descending remember that these are the nerve fibers they descend in the white matter of the spinal cord so when they are descending they will descend in the white matter of the spinal cord but ultimately in the spinal cord they terminate in the ventral horn of the spinal cord okay and these 20 percent of the fibers also which have not crossed in the medulla in the level of the spinal cord ultimately they cross and again in the ventral horn of the spinal cord they synapse with other neurons and what are these neurons where they synapse either it is the alpha motor neuron alpha motor neuron which is supplying the muscles okay or it may synapse to interneurons also so they, this is an interneuron which in turn makes contact with many alpha motor neurons supplying the muscles so this is basic pyramidal tract it's the uh, origin from three areas in the cortex then uh, coronal radiator then passing through the posterior limb of internal capsule descends in the brain stem and in medulla 80 percent of the fibers cross and 20 percent of the fibers descend and then these 20 percent of the fibers also cross in the spinal cord and make contact with the alpha motor neurons or interneurons in the uh, spinal cord now why this tract is named as pyramidal tract well in medulla there is formation of pyramids okay there is a structure known as pyramids and that is formed by this corticospinal tract and hence the name pyramidal tract now there is some confusion here actually uh, the cells in the motor cortex from which they arise that are also known as the pyramidal cells of beds so it is not because they are arising from these cells that their name is pyramidal tract their name is because of the medullary pyramids okay so pyramidal cells of beds so these are very large giant cells are there so the uh, cells of these uh, neurons are large bed cells and then they are descending and these bed cells are located in layer 5 of the cerebral cortex so that was about the course of the pyramidal tract coming to what is its function function as i told you before is voluntary movement right so by supplying the alpha motor neuron interneurons in the spinal cord it is causing the voluntary movement now these 80 percent of the fibers the lateral corticospinal tract that is responsible for skilled movements fine skilled movement that is the main function however this 20 percent that is supplying the proximal muscles because that are on also under voluntary control isn't it so 80 percent of the fibers for distal muscles causing fine skilled movements like writing and 20 percent of the fibers for proximal muscles for coarse movements so that is the main function but before i move on to other tracts when we are talking about corticospinal tract or pyramidal tract we cannot miss the terms upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron so the neuron from the cortex up till the level of the spinal cord where it synapses is known as upper motor neuron and the alpha motor neuron in the spinal cord where the synapse is occurring this alpha motor neuron coming out from the ventral horn of the spinal cord that is the lower motor neuron please remember detailed video on upper motor neuron lower motor neuron uh, lesion and how to identify the site of the lesion i have made another video two videos are there i will give the link in the description section below you can have a look on that also one more thing we have spoken about the corticospinal tract but there is another aspect that is the corticobulbar tracts what is that when the term bulbar is there then we are talking about cranial nerves okay so there are fibers from the motor cortex which are also ending in the brain stem okay and where are they ending they are ending in the cranial nerve nuclei so there are certain cranial nerves that is the cranial nerve fifth right 7th and 12th 12th okay and these cranial nerves are for voluntary movement so from the motor cortex information is also going in the brain stem terminating in the brain stem on these cranial nerve nuclei and those are known as corticobulbar fibers and you see that they are not crossing they are terminating on the same side ipsilaterally crossing is happening in the lower end of the medulla 
So for movement of the facial muscles, for, for movement of the tongue muscles, we have the corticobulbar fibers. With this, let us move on to the extrapyramidal tracts. And uh, what are the extrapyramidal tracts? We said they are rubrospinal tract, vestibulospinal tract, reticulospinal tract and tectospinal tract. So first what we will discuss in extrapyramidal tract is the rubrospinal tract because it forms the lateral systems that is it is responsible for voluntary control. So it arises in the midbrain from the red nucleus of the midbrain okay and then it crosses in the midline just like the lateral corticospinal tract and synapses with the neurons of the lateral muscles however it synapses only with the interneurons or not directly with the alpha motor neurons okay so that fineness of movement which is provided by the lateral corticospinal tract that is missing here so for example if there is injury to the lateral corticospinal tract but rubrospinal tract is intact then the fine writing movements may disappear however the coarse wrist movements will only be there Another thing, it supplies only the flexor muscles of upper limb, flexor muscles of upper limb, not to the lower limb. So it terminates in the upper spinal cord only. So that is rubrospinal tract and this rubrospinal tract gets some facilitatory input from the cortex as well. Moving on to the next tract that is the tectospinal tract. The tectospinal tract also arises from the midbrain. What nuclei? Collicular nuclei is there or the tectum. Okay. And then this also crosses over to the other side and it supplies the cervical spinal cord. It supplies the muscles in the cervical spinal cord. Remember cervical spinal cord. And why cervical spinal cord? Because it supplies the muscles for head and neck movements. So what will be the function of this tectospinal tract? See, suppose if there is some sudden sound, you are focusing somewhere and somewhere you hear a sound. Then what happens? Suddenly you turn your head and eyes towards that sound. Right? So how that is brought about? That is a reflex movement and that is being brought about by this tectospinal tract. You remember that colloquially, uh, receive information in from the auditory pathway and the visual pathway and this information is being used by this tectospinal tract to bring about the head and eye movements so that was simple rubrospinal tract and tectospinal tract moving on to the other tracts that is the reticulospinal tract pontine reticulospinal tract and medullary reticulospinal tract so pontine reticulospinal tract arises from pontine reticular formation and medullary reticulospinal tract arises from medullary reticular formation. So from pontine reticular formation, pontine reticulospinal tract will descend in the spinal cord, right? And you see it is descending medially. However, the medullary reticulospinal tract descends little bit laterally. So somewhere here it will descend, right? But you see there is no crossing over. It doesn't cross. And which muscles it supplies? The reticular spinal tract supply the extensor muscles, extensor muscles, okay. So these are the proximal muscles and they are important for posture maintenance. So after descending into the spinal cord, they synapse with the neurons which are supplying the extensor muscles and where they actually synapse? They synapse on the gamma motor neurons. Remember, reticulospinal tract, reticulospinal tract, they supply the gamma motor neurons. And pontine reticulospinal tract is excitatory to gamma motor neuron, while medullary reticulospinal tract is inhibitory to gamma motor neuron. So, what is the significance of this? See, First of all, extensor muscles are very important for posture maintenance. Whenever there is increase in tone in the extensor muscles, the person can stand up straight and when there is decrease in tone, so that helps in changing the position to some other position. So both are there. One is excitatory to gamma motor neuron, other is inhibitory to gamma motor neuron. Now, Suppose there is some voluntary movement which corticospinal tract have to bring about. Say suppose you are about to run or say suppose you are going to uh, sit in a particular position and carry out a certain task. Now for every movement there is a particular posture which needs to be there, isn't it? So how this posture is brought about? 
that posture is brought about by the information from the cortex going to these reticular spinal tracts okay and depending on what is the need of the posture this pontine and reticular spinal tracts are either activated or inhibited so the muscle tone of the extensor muscles is brought about by influencing the activity of reticular spinal tract for carrying out any voluntary movement so please remember whenever we are going to carry out a voluntary movement along with the pyramidal tract this reticular spinal tract is also activated or inhibited so this is known as kind of feed forward influence of the cortical influence on the reticular spinal tract feet forward so for one activity it is changing the activity in the reticular spinal tract to maintain a particular posture then what about vestibular spinal tract vestibular spinal tract again are two medial and lateral medial arises from medial and inferior vestibular nuclei okay so just remember the term medial right medial and instead of E, remember I. So medial vestibular spinal tract arises from medial and inferior vestibular nuclei and lateral vestibular spinal tract arises from lateral vestibular nuclei. Again these tracts do not cross over. Vestibular spinal tract from the medulla, these vestibular nuclei are present in the medulla, from the medulla actually they descend medially right and again they make synapse with the anti-gravity muscles anti-gravity muscles neurons supplying the anti-gravity muscles and what are these anti-gravity muscles these are flexor muscles of the upper limb and extensor muscles of the lower limb and they are excitatory to the alpha motor neurons of these anti-gravity muscles and what is their function again their function is posture and balance so how is it different from that of reticulospinal tract this vestibular spinal tract mostly functions in a feedback mechanism. Reticular spinal tract, we said, it is functioning in a feed forward mechanism. Whenever voluntary movement is required, reticular spinal tract is getting active or inactive at different levels of the spinal cord. Vestibular spinal tract is, is a feedback mechanism. Suppose when we are walking, right, and suddenly we tend to fall, what will happen? The information from the vestibular apparatus from ears will reach these vestibular nuclei and hence it will bring about the changes in the tone of these anti-gravity muscles and hence preventing us from falling. So it is receiving sensory information and based on that it is correcting the tone. So even if when we are performing some voluntary movement and in a particular posture we are because of the reticulospinal tract, if there is some disruption because of some unexpected activity, the information from vestibular nuclei will change the tone of the anti-gravity muscles. So that is the main function of the vestibular spinal tract. Before I forget, I was talking about medial and lateral uh, vestibular spinal tract. Well, this uh, medial vestibular spinal tract supplies the cervical spinal cord. That is the movement of the neck is brought about by this medial vestibular spinal tract. Okay. And it supplies bilaterally. So there is crossing over also and supplies bilateral muscles and lateral vestibular spinal tract supplies the anti-gravity muscles of the limbs so that was fundamental about the various descending tracts and their function which i don't think you will find anywhere that uh, what is the difference between the various tracts and their functions before we end let us summarize little bit so what we said that in descending tracts we have the lateral systems okay lateral systems and there are the medial systems okay in later systems we have the pyramidal tract then we have the rubrospinal tract in medial system we have the reticulospinal tract where we talked about the pontine and medullary tracts then we have the uh, which one vestibulospinal tract right so there is vestibulospinal tract where we have again the medial and lateral tracts and then we have the last one that is the tectospinal tract so summary entire course we discussed in pyramidal tract and where it is terminating on the alpha motor neurons and also on the interneurons to bring about the contraction of the group of the muscles and also the fine 
skilled movements are brought about this uh, lateral pyramidal tract and then there is anterior pyramidal tract also 20% of the fibers which you don't cross they are supplying the proximal muscles as well then there is a rubrospinal tract again which ends on the interneurons and supplies the alpha motor neurons basically these interneurons then end on the alpha motor neurons and there is excitatory effect on the alpha motor neurons especially of the flexor muscles of the upper limb flexor muscles of upper limb so what we said that even if pyramidal tract is injured coarse movement of the flexor muscles of upper limb will remain intact due to the rubrospinal tract then coming to the medial descending tract so this uh, reticulospinal tract they supply the gamma motor neuron where pontine is excitatory to the gamma motor neuron and medullary is inhibitory to the gamma motor neuron of which muscles of the extensor muscles and they work in the feet forward mechanism for the posture maintenance for any voluntary control right then vestibular spinal tract where we have medial and lateral vestibular spinal tract medial supplies the neck muscles bilaterally and lateral supplies the anti gravity muscles and where it supplies which uh, neuron it supplies it is excitatory to the alpha motor neurons and it works mostly in feedback mechanism where the information sensory information is made use for correcting the posture and balance as required and tectospinal tract which arises from the follicular nuclei in the midbrain that is responsible for attention that is movement of the head and eyes towards an unexpected stimulus when it comes so that reflex movement is going on so that was all about descending tracks if you have any other questions post in the comment section below if you like the video press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you